Hello, this is Kevin here. Um, what I'm going to be doing in this video is I'm going to be recreating, I guess I'm going to be directly translating this ZX81 listing onto the Spectrum Next and getting it to work. So the ZX81 and the ZX Spectrum Next are, are two kind of different little beasts. They're similar because they come from the same family of computers, but they have different hardware limitations or hardware features. And some things that are in the programming language of one do not exist in the other. Speci specifically, some of the commands in the ZX81 are not actually on the Spectrum Next. Now, it comes from this book here. This book is it's kind of like a personal meaning for me, a personal fondness, I guess, if you can call it that. Basically, it's the book that I got um, after I got the ZX81 that really got me hooked on programming. It was all about writing games. And what was really impressive was it was writing games on a machine with literally no, I guess, no resources, like almost no memory. And the way these are written are written in ways that are specific to saving as much of the memory as possible. And I'll talk through that as we go. Now, not all of this stuff, I mean, most of the stuff will work on the Spectrum Next because it is ZX Basic. And Next Basic and ZX Basic are pretty much from the same, I guess, stock. Um, but some of the things in here will not work on the Spectrum Next, obviously. As you can see on line 10, there's a poke to memory address that doesn't exist on the ZX Spectrum Next. And on 80, there's some peaks of memory addresses to read stuff off the screen. They do exist on the Spectrum Next, this particular one. Not at that address, though. It's at a different memory address. Okay, and line 40 is a command called scroll, and that doesn't actually exist on the Spectrum Next. Okay, so let's have a look, and I'm going to flick across to the Spectrum Next here. Now, this is a C-Spec emulator, not Spectrum, uh, actual Spectrum Next hardware, but that's all right. Hit the space bar, we're going to go uh, to Next Basic, and let's type in the code as is. So, for the ones with the commands that uh, I know aren't going to work on the Spectrum Next, I'm just going to put a semicolon, which is like a, a remark statement. Then I'm going to type in the bits line by line. So let p equals 10. This is the player's coordinate across the screen. 30. Let l equals 40 plus int 30 times rand. Okay, so line 30 is the length of the game. Because it is a scrolling game, it's not going to scroll forever. So what it does is 40 lines plus zero to 30 extra lines to kind of randomize it up a little bit 40 like i said there's a command called scroll if i type it in here beep doesn't exist so we can make it scroll but we're going to, have to do something a bit more next oriented we'll talk about that later okay line 50 let p equals abs p abs or absolute we'll say if p goes negative it'll make it a positive number and I'll tell you why that's important in here in a sec. Key dollar. So to read a key equals, and we're going to use the same key presses as the X81, which are four and one. Oops. Who picked these particular keys? Who knows? But we'll stick to it. Okay, so that moves the character. Okay, line 60 checks to see if P is greater than 19. Then let P equals 19. Okay, checks to make sure it doesn't go too far away across the side because the maximum width of our gameplay area is 20 characters wide. Now you notice that line 70 is not is a print. There's no if P is smaller than zero to reset it to stop it getting out the other side of the screen. However, line 50 uses that ABSP, which makes any negative one value a plus one value. Now, the reason that's important, um, not so much for the Spectrum Next, but more for the ZX81, is because of the 1K of RAM. 1K means you want to minimize having as much code as, as possible. So it'll all fit into the little bit of RAM that you've got. So ABSP is like a way of kind of getting rid of an entire line of basic that checks for P is smaller than zero. 
and it just kind of like solves that. It kind of uses less memory. It's quite a, a simple idea, but it works really well. And it's the little tricks like this that uh, were the way that you kind of cram games into such a small amount of uh, memory. So let's go to the next slide, 70. Print at 0, comma p. Semicolon, always important. Okay, if you don't need semicolon, it'll do print, and then it'll go down to the next line when you print again. Okay, so what it's doing is it's basically printing nothing. It's moving the cursor internally. So the cursor is the location on the text screen where it's going to do and print. If we get print something, it's going to appear at that location because that's where it's moved the cursor to. Now 80, down here, it goes if peak. Now what it's doing is this is reading a system variable called dfcc, which I think is the cursor location in the print buffer, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you find out more about this on page three, well, you find out about it, but you find this on the spectrum next that on page 304, because you can see in here, we've got if peak and then a couple of values in there. These are just slightly different. So you'll find it part way down, but halfway down on page 304. We'll come back to that later. I mean, all that's doing is just checking for collision detection. Okay, so we can uh, keep going. We can kind of work this game with that collision detection to make sure it works. Okay, we're going to go print. And it's an uppercase O, which represents the player. Or the player's barrel as he goes down goes down the, uh, the rapids. Okay, oops, hit a key. Okay, now you notice that it's an inverted O. Now what you can do, or what you could do, on the Spectrum and the Spectrum, uh, and the ZX81, is you could uh, use a control code or a key to invert the video, or invert the characters, and when you type they come out in, like inverted, like that, black on white, and white on black. Now you can't do that, and I think I read online that this kind of got removed around the Spectrum 128K era, okay? But we can make it inverted if we use the command inverse one and then use a semicolon and o and what that'll do is it'll print the o and invert it for us and we just can't type it into the basic listing okay so the next line because we're scrolling l equals l minus one we have to decrease the length now we don't doesn't matter there's no case sensitivity in variables but i'm gonna Keep them uppercase. Let's keep it consistent with the uh, ZX81. Why not? Okay, so we decrease that. Now it's going to scroll that far, and when it reaches zero, it's going to uh, it's going to basically say this is the end. But we're getting. I mean, the whole aim of the game is to kind of basically go down to Niagara Falls. So what it does is once it's got to the bottom, it'll start displaying this Niagara Fall kind of graphic to say, ah, we're there. So you know you're about to reach the end. So what it does is if it's if L is equal to a negative 13 value, because it can go 13 lines further down, and then you'll be past the you'll be past the rapids. Then we've got to the end. So we're gonna go to 200. Okay, 200. We'll get that to that shortly. If you look at the listing on the screen, you can see it prints you reached the falls, which is basically you won the game. Okay, 120. Print at 13, comma, zero, comma, zero, sorry, not semicolon, zero. Okay, so this moves the print location to the beginning of the 13th line. This whole game works in, like, just the top 14 lines of the screen. Okay, that very first poke, by the way, is 16418, comma, 10. It defines the height of the screen. So how many lines will the X81 treat as the size of the screen? At 10 means 14 lines because it's basically 24 lines minus whatever the value you poke so if you poke zero there it resets it 10 makes it 14 okay, and the reason you do that is because of course the speed of the machine is slow if you are only going to be scrolling the certain area of the screen it's going to be a little bit faster and a little bit more efficient so we just play the game in the top 14 rather than the entire than the entire screen okay so 130, 130 says, okay, 
if we are past all the rapids. Let's start printing waterfall. So that scrolls a waterfall up. So we're going to go if L is less than or equal to zero. So as it gets past the bottom, then print okay, tab times RMD five colon. And then we have some graphic characters in there. So the rand will push it certain amount of spaces across. So basically print start the cursor at the beginning of line 13. And then we print plus up to random five spaces and then the text. So it kind of just randomizes out the location of things in here. Okay, and we need these graphic characters here. Now these graphic characters you'll find on page, and we'll flick in the manual, page 108 if you're curious. I'm going to just kind of mention pages in the manual as I go because sometimes it's well worth knowing this because then you at least look in the manual and get kind of um you kind of know where to find the resources in the manual because the manual is a good book if you're uh, not a big programming expert or you want to know all about the next then the book like the books have always come for the Sinclair machines is a great programming guide Okay, so we need to print those characters. Now, if you see on page 108, it says you basically switch it to graphics mode, which is cap shift nine. Okay, and then you can type in one of the numbers from one to eight, which will have little graphic glyphs on them. Well, I call them glyphs because I'm not sure if there's a technical name for them, but uh, basically they're little symbolic graphics, like it's very simple blocky graphics that go all the way back to the ZX81. So to do that, we need to have the actual Spectrum keyboard. Um, and what C-Spec lets you do, you won't have this problem on a real Spectrum, of course, Spectrum Next, is it has a like a simplified key input thing for when you're programming. So you can just type in with the cursor keys and everything else. Those aren't going to work because we've got Shift 9 has a bracket. Okay, so we need to be able to switch it to the Spectrum key keyboard format. So if you press the F10 key in c spec you'll see it says at the top, keys in game mode. Game mode just means it's really just the normal Spectrum keyboard. So Shift 9, you notice the cursor changes color to a purple. And that key, particular pattern, the little checkered pattern facing to a, it's like a right slant, is Shift 6 according to page 108. And there are around 15 of those. So we go shift six and we go one, two, three, four, five, six, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And then we hit shift and nine to switch it off, switch off the um, graphics mode. Sorry, it took a while for my brain to click there. Okay, I'm gonna hit F10, go back to my basic programming because it's much easier to type things than to use cursor keys <laughs> in that mode. Then remember when you're using the cursor keys, it's shift five, six, seven, and eight, or shift and the arrow keys on the keyboard if you're using a PC keyboard. Oh, okay, something didn't like that. So tab. And we print tab. Okay, it's not times rand five, it's rand times five. Because tab doesn't have a multiply in it. It's not a mathematical statement. Right, so 140. 140 says if L is greater than zero, which means we're in the rapid still, then print tab rand times and 15. Okay, because remember the game space across the, the game play area, zero to 19, that's the players, I guess the players are um, the limits. So what is gonna happen, it's gonna print a block of five squares or five blocks plus or minus 15 spaces. So it's gonna space them across that 20 character kind of gap. So speech marks, we need to go to F10 to go back to game mode. So remember, Shift F9 for graphics mode. And according to the manual, it is Shift 8. So five of those, Shift 8, you know, one, two, three, four, five. Shift F9, okay, I'm gonna flick back out to basic mode. So keyboards are nicer to use. Okay, and then at 150, we go to 40. 
which will jump us all the way back to our game loop where we'll have that scroll command that of course we know doesn't work. So 160, let's uh, do the last few lines. So uh, print tab zero, semicolon, okay. 160 is where you go hit the rocks. So this is where if you crash into the rocks, you'd go. 170, it's gonna do a pause that waits for key press. Now 484 was basically like in a really huge number, so it would wait for, for what felt like forever. On the spectrum, we just had to go pause zero. That would do the same thing. However, what happens with a pause is that if you've been holding keys down and pressing keys, sometimes that's still retained, like in a keyboard buffer. Um, and what that can do is it can basically tell the pause, oh, keys pressed. So what you do, and it's quite common, is you go two pauses. So you pause one, which you clear that. And then you say, okay, now that the keys have been uh, cleared then we'll do a pause zero which is just hold it there for uh, as long as it needs until you hit a key 180 cls and 190 we just go run which will take us basically back and run the game again so 200 okay this is where we go to if we won we've seen that in line 110 we just got to go print tab zero Okay, tab zero means at the beginning of the line, or no spaces in front of it, I should say. Like in a line that's just tab, is just a spacing effect. Um, it falls. Yay, we won. And then at 210, it's going to go to 170. Now you notice it doesn't do a pause, a CLS, and a run after that. It goes back up to those lines where it does that. And again, that's to do with the amount of uh, memory. It's uh, one of those things that you say if you don't need to repeat it, don't do another three lines of code because we're going to run out of memory too quick. So just go to 170 and just reuse that code. Oh, you run. Oh. Okay, so that's it. Now the problem is, one is that we can't scroll. Okay, no scroll command. But what we can do in the spectrum next, and this is pretty cool, is on page 249, I'm going to flick there in my manual right now. Doo, doo, doo. It talks about a thing called user windows. Now user windows are like regions of the screen, and they use a streaming system. Um, a stream basically means you can open a stream, or a, I guess a channel you could also call it. Um, and what it would do is it lets you kind of push data out to a different location, a stream. So a stream could be writing to a disk, a file on disk, I should say, a file. Um, it could be to a screen, it could be to a driver, it could be to anything. So what we need to do is define a region that sits around the screen or on the screen, at the top, maybe 14 lines, like it does with that poke. And then we can feed a control code to that to say, scroll that region of the screen where we're printing the game graphics and everything. Or in this case, a game text. Okay, so 10, let's set up the stream. So I'm going to go open. Let's say you open a screen, screen, stream. Don't say screen, Kev. Um, don't worry, I burble. It's getting late at night. Okay, use a hash, and then you put the number of the stream. Now it could be four, it could be one, two, three, four. I'm going to use, I'm going to flick it to page 250. There's actually a good example in there, and it talks about how to set up the stream output to this, this user defined window. Okay, I'm going to use there. It's five. Sometimes I use four. Okay, so open a stream to a number. That's the number we're going to be feeding things to. And then in speech marks, we put our little destination. So for a window or a region on the screen, it's W greater than symbol. And then we put the values for that window in here. So zero comma zero means the top corner. Okay, then we have the height on the ZX81, it says 14, so let's use 14 here as well. And let's just make it the width of the screen, so 32. And we can close that. Okay, now to scroll that part of the screen, let's get a line 40. So for the scroll command, that's going to affect that region at the top, that 14 line region. We just go print to that port, so hash 5. Oops chr dollar 
and if we look at 251 you'll see that there's a control code 7 that sends a scroll command to that and it's not char dollar it's ch oh wait it's maybe it's semicolon print and then chr7 okay 80 is the detecting the the collision we'll leave that blank for now if it works we should be able to now at least play the game without actually dying so let's go run oh and there we go okay so there's our rapids there uh, going up and here comes the waterfall okay this is invalid stream now you also notice there was a lot of big gaps between things as well okay and we'll have a look at that in a sec so 10 open it says invalid stream when we run this because it goes and runs again if you've got a stream open and you try and open it again it'll come up with an invalid stream so the only, what you've got to do when you're working with streams you've got to make sure you close them so that when you go open it goes well that one was closed or didn't wasn't actually active so what i'm going to do is at the start because i'm using run to jump back up before we do the open you can actually run a close command close hash and a stream number doesn't matter if it's not open close will just close it if it's open so the close will just make sure it's closed and then open open it fresh again okay now we had uh if we run that again you notice that we're starting to get all these big gaps doubled gaps between everything okay and the run worked again that's because when we go print without a semicolon it's printing that and then it's placing a new line at the bottom of it and it works fine at the start right because it is feeding chr7 and then it's kind of like uh going down the next line going down the next line going down the next line it gets to a point and when it reaches the very bottom of that region it starts actually putting a new line feed in so suddenly everything starts to have a double spacing okay so what we can do is want to make sure that it's always not going to keep feeding down further and further and further we can just put at zero comma zero we don't need that semicolon on the end and they'll always print it at that top corner we go run now we shouldn't get double spacing yeah perfect look at that that's what it should look like space okay so we've got that far let's put in the collision detection and we should be finished now i'm going to use exactly the same process that we have right there i'm going to get the peak look for that black character and then use it to kill the player if they've hit it now that's on uh, like i think i said at the beginning what did i can't remember um, i say a lot of things i mean most of them really i do so on page 304 we're looking for this dfcc address and display file of the print position so this is the thing that's going to read that zero comma p location and that is at two three six eight four okay on the zx81 it was one six three nine eight so i'm going to use exactly the same line of code so if peak look at what's at the memory address and the memory address we're looking for is two six three eight four in fact no that's a peak so you have to get the address from that location two three six eight four plus peak two three six eight five times 256 and if it's equal to and it says code and it has that character in there now there's one thing that i was having a bit of discussion on facebook about um and that is for some reason the spectrum next doesn't return um, the correct ascii value for that which should be 143 and you would have seen that on page 108 next to that block it tells you the ascii character code it doesn't return that it returns a value called 255 or not called of 255 there's nothing called 255 okay and go to 160 okay so how do i know it's like 255 well you can do this to debug stuff sometimes what i'll do is i'll put a colon semicolon to comment things out i'll change that f to pro 
print. And what that'll do is it'll print it the middle of the screen, the ask or the value that it reads at that screen buffer address. So we won't be able to play the game, but we'll be able to watch. Zero, two fifty five. And when every time it hits a black square hits there, it returns the value. Now it hits this, it says fifteen. Okay. And that's how we know it's 255. And that's how I found out it was 255. I actually just sat there and printed. Well, print if. So we'll put it back. If we can get rid of the comment. So we now should be able to run the game. We hit. You hit the rocks. Yeah, we're doing pretty well. Hey, hey. Oh, hit the rocks. Now there is a handy cheat in here oh, sometimes it works sometimes those things will never get far enough across and you can just sit over there okay you can see this game is ridiculously hard I mean how are you supposed to beat that that's like there's no way you can get around those so whoever wrote this game was well, pretty sadistic so if I made the game a little easier just yeah, just remove a couple of those so they're not so wide. There we go, now gets the spacing between it. Uh, even when it's small, I just still suck at this. Okay, so I'm going over here now because I can't go out that far. You know, it takes epic skill to do that. Okay, so what we've done is we've basically taken a ZX81 game and we've got it working on the Spectrum Next. So we've kind of looked at a few things in here that are interesting. One is that user windows, well worth reading, page 249 on the manual. Um, the other one is using using a, the, a system variable that reads the character at that location. On the ZX Spectrum and the ZX Spectrum Next, you can use one called screen dollar, bracket zero comma p, which should read the character from screen. The reason I didn't use it here is because it doesn't recognize those graphic characters that I've got in the string there at all, which is really annoying. There's been some really good suggestions on Facebook um, to use the UDGs or use color attributes, um, but I wanted to keep it kind of legit. Um, what do I mean by legit? Keep it to the ZX81. So try and get it as close as, as possible to the same code. So I wouldn't have to try and re-modify everything with different code. Now I'm obviously going to, um, I would change this if I was going to do it as a next version. I am going to actually do a next version, but I'll do that in a future video that's using proper sprites and graphics and and just a whole pile of other stuff. So hopefully that was uh, maybe interesting, maybe not interesting. Um, for me, loved it, good fun, just a good challenge. If you're not sure about programming or if you've got no ideas of things to write with a program, you could try doing something like this, going off, finding some listings, and there are hundreds of listings for the ZX81 or even the ZX Spectrum, and try making them work on the next. Again, just go view those pages. I gave you those pages, I guess, um, in the Spectrum Next manual, um, but you can find a lot of the answers inside the manual for other things. So until next time, I will sign off, and I'll probably get a bed because it's very late here in New Zealand. So, um, good night and ta-ra.